Hi, I'm Mark Weitzman. Welcome back to some of my videos on theoretical physics. Uh, it's been a while, I apologize, but I'm going to try and catch up now and try and do at least a video a day for the next few months. Basically, any problem that I work on during the day or the next day before, I'll make a video on it if it seems the slightest bit interesting. And in addition, I know I have to go back and finish all that stuff on finite groups and then go into uh, continuous groups as well as uh, some videos on complex analysis. So um, hopefully I'll be able to get this going. So right now, um, Steven Weinberg has a three volume opus on the, the quantum theory of fields, volume one, volume two, volume three. They're quite difficult books. I don't recommend them as your first book on quantum field theory. But if you've read a couple of books on quantum field theory, like Peskin and Schroeder or Mar Sudnecki's book or Anthony Z Z's book, then I recommend reading this as soon as you can. Um, it's got a lot of details that the other books skimp over and a lot of the whys of, you know, why is quantum field theory the way it is? And it's a very uh, original and unique approach, but it's not easy. And today, I just want to do a, uh, a problem from Volume 1, Foundations, um, Chapter 2, Problem 4. And um, Chapter 2, Problem 4 basically says to show that these two vectors, the square of the uh, momentum energy vector and the square of the uh, um, W mu, W mu, called otherwise known as the Pauli Lubansky pseudo vector, I'll just call it the Pauli vector right now, which is related to spin, but is not the actual spin vector. But it has properties that are related to it. And I want to show that this commutes with all Lorentz transformations. Actually, I mean all Poincare transformations. And just to review the notation, and um, this is a Lorentz transformation represented by a matrix lambda. It has six parameters representing three boosts, you know, velocity, you can accel go that way, that way, that way, and three rotations, so you can also rotate. In non-relativistic parameters, we, we just deal with the three rotations, but now we got special relativity, so we got three boosts. There's also a translation parameter, this is what makes it a Poincaré transformation, not just a Lorentz transformation, and there's four possible translations, three in space, one in time. So altogether we get the 10 parameter Poincaré group, and we're going to implement the transformations on space-time by a unitary operator, we'll call it U, which corresponds to the lambda, every lambda and, and every A will have a different U. We want to show that U of lambda comma A for an arbitrary lambda and A commutes with p mu p mu, the energy momentum 4 vector squared, and it also computes with this Pauli vector. The Pauli Lubansky vector is defined as epsilon mu mu rho lambda j nu rho p lambda. This is the anti-symmetric, completely anti-symmetric symbol in four dimensions. And um, to show this, we don't have um, I'm going to use, it's not that hard, it's just I just want to show people how to do some tensor manipulation. It's actually very simple. And also um, how to use the equations in Weinberg's book. Now, there's two equations that are central in Weinberg's book, which he derives 2.3 point, I'm sorry. 2.4.8 and 2.4.9 and the equation is as follows u and I'm not going to derive this because you're supposed to have derived it yourself or read the book
Okay, so that's one equation which we'll use for the Pauli vector a lot. And then there's the other equation which is much simpler. That's a rho, not a p. All of my uh, indices are Greek indices, even if they don't look Greek, they are intended to be Greek indices, and they run from zero to four, and eta will be the Minkowski metric, and it won't be relevant whether we're using the uh, 111 minus one or the minus one, 111 metric. We're not gonna have any indices anywhere, so. I mean, no, like, one, the zeros or fours or anything like that. Okay, so I'm going to keep these equations up here. I don't want to rewrite them. Okay, let's do the easy one. The easy one is, of course, the energy momentum one. So let's just write it out. U, lambda, comma, A, P, mu, P, mu, U inverse, lambda, comma, A, is equal to, and all you do with everything when you have this, since we know how the action of, of momentum under a unitary transformation, we just got to put things in between there so we can handle each of these separately. So this is equal to I'm writing this out in much more detail than I would. I'm putting in these parameters and everything. Um, I just don't want anybody to get confused and everything. But And I've also put this up on my website on Piazza. Um, I think it's the one on quantum field theory, a student's perspective. Okay. So now we just use this. You just got to keep careful track. Don't, don't use a dummy index that's already been used. And we do the standard lowering and raising, so, you know, on the second one, the, you know, the index is lowered, so rho goes down, rho goes down. But keep the order on the lambda, and don't change those, but you can go up and down. So this is equal to, um, I'm going to put in some stuff here just to... Um, Put in an identity. I'll explain in a second. This is the eta. Okay, so what did I do here? I lowered the beta index with, with the P beta. So I raised it here. So that's where the lambda beta U P beta comes from. I, I left out something. Should be a P alpha in here. Now remember, the only operators are the P's. These matrices, lambdas, eta's, all of those things are just numbers. They're, they're, they're matrices, but any component is just a number, so I can bring that out in front. Same thing with like the epsilons and the other things. The only operators here are P, J, and the U's. Okay, so that 
counted for that. And then what I did was I used an identity, um, which is 2.3.10 in the book. It's more of a definition that lambda new row is equal to eta new u eta rho sigma lambda mu sigma so what I want to do is I want to get this um, I want to just uh, I just want to do some manipulation here and, and get the indices going from top to bottom this way. So I, I just did that. Um, so using that identity, you know, alpha and alpha gamma, gamma sigma sigma mu. Okay. So now this over here is equal to. eta alpha gamma and now there's another identity this is the fun the defining definition of a Lorentz transformation which is um, I'll write that down too 2.3.5 you know and 2.3.6 I'm not going to write it all down I, and I'm just going to write it down sketchy wise if you have an eta, a lambda, and a lambda, that's equal to an eta. And what you do is you have two indices up here, and then those two indices are down here. And then what's up here goes up here. Let's call this x, x. So this is going to call it y. x, y. And then there's the other one where you can have like eta and you have dot dot and now you have lambda dot lambda dot x y eta x y so these are just these are the defining definitions of the um, Lorentz transformation and how they work with the um, Minkowski group it's really something like um, if you write it down correctly, eta transpose lambda eta equals eta, something like that. But the details are in the book. So here I have mu and sigma, and, and this is symmetric, so I can go either way with those, mu and sigma. So now I'm going to get eta gamma beta. Then I get P alpha, P beta, and you can see this, this, that's just going to be equal to delta, with the chronic of delta, delta beta alpha, which just sets alpha equal to beta, so we get like P beta, P beta, and we can write that as P mu, P mu. We can change in this dummy indices. So what we've shown in a sense is that, and I'll be sketchy here, we've shown that u p squared u inverse is equal to p squared or u p squared, now we multiply by u on the right, is equal to p squared u. And that's what we want to show, the commutator of u comma p squared equals zero. Okay, so um, that's, the, um, that's the easy one, and I will um, come back in the next video, and I'll do the hard one, the one involving the uh, anti-symmetric symbols, and um, 
you can see it's going to be more involved because we have, you know, we have two vectors in each W, so we're going to have twice as many things and everything. But it's actually, actually works out very simply if you can remember what you use, how you get identities from these epsilons and what you use it for. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.